and welcome to the LHC, where we are finally, after sweeping through all the bullshit, going to talk about <laughs> the actual plot of uh, Fairy Dance, which takes place yes. in Alfenheim Online. So, Hugh. Where were we? Hugh, um, uh, Kirito essentially goes into Alfenheim on a hunch because Asin is there. Yeah. And so, he, go on. One thing is, just before he goes in, and I know, I know that we just spent a whole episode talking about before he goes in, but they do a little bit of a thing here, which is his basically PTSD about going back in. There is a little bit of that here, but it does sort of bother me that he pretty much gets over it like immediately. Mm. And then just goes in. I yep. mean, it's just there's like one scene of him sort of looking at it, like he's a bit worried and breathing heavily. But I just, I don't know. I, I, I think it's just a bit. You'd expect most people who were trapped in Sword Art to never put the helmet on again. And I, I do feel like there's, there's a bit of PTSD stuff, but I do think it was a missed opportunity to not go into that a lot more. Mm. You know, him overcoming it to get in to find Asna and to help her and. You know, I know that later on there's a bit where people are, lo- his allies are losing health and he kind of goes a bit, you know, crazy because he's, you know, still used to that being that they're going to die. Yeah. And uh, same with like when he's losing a lot of health later on. So I do think they go into it, but I think it it could have been a lot better if that was the major focus of this arc, I think, was sort of Kirito overcoming his uh, wounds from the psychology of the original game. I think that would have been nice. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. But, um, so here is kind of stupid coincidence that, again, this is number two that has a decent explanation that he's just going to stop giving after this arc. Um, in that when Kirito first arrives, he essentially makes his character. He decides to be a Spriggan, which is the ones that are, um, dressed in black. I think that's basically the reason that he picks them. Yeah. But they're also the masters of illusion and, uh, like, um, yeah, it's basically illusion magic, essentially. Mm. So when he goes in, now, because his IP is the same as his sister's, and they're both kind of coming from the same house, the game system puts him in near her. Which, again, is is a decent, like, hand-wavy way of making sure that they meet in the game. Because unbeknownst to him... While he was in the coma and sort of online, well, coma equivalent anyway, um, his sister, um, Sizaha, had decided that she wanted to know what he was experiencing and had, as such, bought this new equipment and had gone and tried the fairy game and really enjoyed Alfheim online, loved being able to fly, and is now playing it fairly high level as well and uh, is, is quite good at it and playing it reasonably frequently. So fairly quickly he meets her and uh, she offers to guide him around the place for no real reason other than that she's nice, which again is sort of a staple of these things. Kirito just meets a woman who decides to help him (laughs) for the sake of it. But that's not really that bad a thing. Um, And he tries to fly to the tree because the picture of Asuna said it was up at the tree and fails because there's an inbuilt height limit to the amount you can fly and uh yeah so as such he decides to go on a big quest to go to the world tree and considering going to the world tree is finishing the game um he's basically deciding to take on the last boss on his own and just win uh which nobody has ever managed to do and it's kind of a bit of a high bar being set so the major reason he's able to accomplish this, which again is a little bit hand wavy, because you can't have Kirito turning up to an MMO as a level one character if you want the sort of impending threat of Asuna's marriage to be the the motivating factor, because it's like I think two weeks or something, equally short, and if you want him to actually be able to do anything, you kind of need him not to turn up a level one. So he turns up, not only is he ridiculously high level because he's got all his skills and abilities, um, I don't think he can keep his items from Sword Art because they haven't got a uh, function in Alfheim, but he can certainly keep his money and there is one item that works which is Yui. That's a very nasty way to describe back. Yui. What? It is. It's the item. It's in his inventory as an item. Is The item is her data. So when he activates that, 
she appears in Alfheim Online and is now a navigation pixie. Mm, which was a pre-order bonus. Yeah, this, exactly. This is all good, but this is just recapping what happened in yeah. in Alfenheim. Yeah, I'm just saying, but we were supposed to sort of look about why, unlike sword arts, the, the ironclad arc, despite being written afterwards, this doesn't work. It doesn't work because it's boring. It's well, really boring. It's just start. him trekking over. Well, yeah, we don't, not... need to, we don't need to go through the boring um, right. storyline by line. All right, apologies because being going through the boring storyline line by line because it's boring. Mm. No, look, the major problem here is that Kirito turns up and he's called Kirito and that is the, um, you know, the portmanteau of his name. Kirito is uh, Kaguya and Kasuto. Is that his name? One second, he's got a ridiculously manly name. Yeah, uh, Kazuto Kirigaya. Yeah, yeah, Kirito Kirigaya, which mixed together. So is he's got Kirito. the Kiri from Kiri, from Kirigaya, and the To from Kazuto. Yeah. So the thing, so the major, but in katakana. But yeah, go on. So yeah, the first thing that annoys me is firstly that Suzuha is in love with him. Because they just decided every woman in Kirito's vague proximity has to be in love with him. Mm. So they kind of go, right, so he's going to have a sister who's in love with him. But it's okay, because it's not really his sister, it's actually his cousin. Because that's okay in Japan, even if it's not really okay here. But um, it's, again, it's just kind of bullshit in that it's a case of, oh yeah, and then he's got a sister. But because it's a woman, it's automatically going to be that she's in love with Kirito. Mm. And then Regardless decides, of the situation. <laughs> well, yeah, it's just kind of stupid. I mean, again, you could get away with one of these, but it's the fact that it's every it's every single woman. I'd, I'd let it go once. Mm. After this is, what, the fifth one? It's just getting to be bloody stupid at this point. Especially, as you've repeatedly pointed out, Kirito barely has a personality and certainly doesn't have anything that would cause uh, throngs of women to throw themselves at his feet. Mm. But um, He's just so, yeah, there. That's, yeah, he is. And that is just kind of bullshit. One thing I did quite like, though, is that they um, they have... Because she likes Kendo, they do have a, a sparring match with swords in the real world. Mm. Where Kirito goes, huh, there's no assist system in the real world, which helps my movements. And my muscles are all shitty and weak. And yeah. rubbish. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> he haven't... feels miserably. Yeah. yeah. So, no, I, I did think that was a nice touch. But, no, the, so... Yeah, so he turns up and he meets Suzuha, who doesn't recognise, because, of course, you wouldn't know the online avatar profile name of your brother who you're obsessed with and who's been in the coma for that long. I just, I don't know. I think that that's a bit of a stretch, but I can believe it, apart from that his name is a bloody portmanteau of his actual name. Yeah. But you know, it, the, the, the implied thing is that she doesn't know much about the gameriness because before <clears throat> he was, before he went into Sword Art Online, he didn't know about the whole yeah. gaming situation. You know, they didn't have it. It wasn't a shared interest of theirs. In fact, it, her yeah. interest was Kendo and he didn't like it because he didn't like how mean their teacher was. So he left. Yeah. But it is a thing. It relies on a fair few little things like the fact that, again, any plot point that relies on two people not having a conversation about something that would probably come up annoys me in the narrative. Mm. And the fact that she's got this game system and plays Alphine Online, in my view, a much better version of this story would have been that he goes, oh my God, she might be an Alphine Online. And the sister goes, I play that. Yeah. You know, I play that. And uh, she helps... It, and Although she he immediately know. goes, oh, I can teach you about the world. We can go in, we can log in together, and I can show you the ropes, and it's all fine. Whereas that's exactly what happens, except she doesn't know mm. that it's her brother. <laughs> yeah. Which allows her to think, oh, you know, I've really got to get over my brother. I mean, it's kind of uh, that I'm in love with my brother anyway, but even if I wasn't, you know, in love with him because he's my brother, the fact that he's in love with this Asana woman... Which, again, if, if Kirito has told her about Asana, you would have thought something would come up about her playing or his name or any of this sort of shit. Anyway, point is, she then goes, oh, I'm going to fall in love with this guy instead as a way to get over my brother because he's in love with someone else. And as such, not only does she fall in love with Kirito, she also falls in love with Kirito as an avatar. <laughs> and again, it doesn't really come up that both of them 
live in the same place as the same house and the same family. And it it's it's that, like I say, any plot that requires two characters never to have a conversation about a certain thing just annoys me. Because well, yeah, it's... If- it, I remember some a friend of mine <clears throat> saying this. It's like if the plot point could be solved by people just talking like adults, it's not a yeah. good. It's not good tension. It's not a good conflict. Mm. What's the conflict? We don't talk to each other. That's a dumb conflict. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if as well they're doing this big long journey, it takes in-game hours of like two or three days where they're pretty much doing nothing but playing the game. You'd pass the time by talking, and I know you'd originally start off talking about, like, oh, how does the game work? How do you fly? What's the situation with this? What's your quest? But at any point, the character of Kirito says, oh, I've got to rescue Asna. Hmm. She'd go, Asna? Isn't that the name of my brother's, like, love interest? Hmm. Or he'd go, oh, yeah, I don't go to school at the minute. I was involved in the Sword Art event, so I'm currently recovering. Oh, really? My brother was in that? It's just, like, literally any mention of anything about Kirito's life in the real world, or even his goals for coming into the virtual world, because I'm well aware that you might go into a virtual world and never mention the real, would immediately twig that she's doing this. So, again, it's this... It's this bullshit of oh yeah and then they'd spent all this time together but not to the point where she is really falling in love with him but they've never mentioned a single thing about their actual fucking lives yeah that's very weird <clears throat> yeah it's kind of bullshit just so that people don't know we know that um uh Sugaha is actually kirito's cousin she was raised as his sister and they only found out why and um Sugaha only found out while kirito was in sword art online yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah. So the problem with that is yeah. First of all, we've got the problem with how Sugaha is treated, and the anime is super creepy on her. And like, yes, there's this whole period. Where did you know that? Super- I mean, did you know that Sugaha has breasts? Because I know because the anime has told me <laughs> a lot in no uncertain terms. Mm. Yeah. The uh, but the other problem is, of course. You know, it's it's this p- perfectly decent sort out online actiony stuff of actually getting to Asana, but once you get to Asana, she's like horribly trussed up in this fairy uh, outfit and everything, and yeah. uh, Su- Sugo comes in as Oberon, and is just even you know how creepy he was when he was doing horrible stuff to her while she was unconscious uh, in a coma. Well, he then continues to do it in the game. And it's yeah. creepy as all hell. Oh, yeah. No, it's it's super fucking creepy. It's mm. just this... Okay, so, yeah. Just the skipping to the, the side of Asna. So, Asna is locked in this gilded cage. Oh, the metaphor. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, she's kept in a giant bird cage. And she's watching him coming and going. And he's basically just keeping her there while he experiments on the other 300 people. Because, of course, he basically decided, hey... Doesn't this give us full access to their brains? What if we could modify their memories and personalities and absolutely fuck with people so that they were either super soldiers? Well, the army would love that because, um, again, shorthand for anyone evil in this, uh, we're doing this so that the army is going to have better fighters. Again, that's always the shorthand for what the villain is secretly doing after the first arc. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, the, the problem here is, firstly... She does manage to get out of her cage at one point by watching him type the pin into the door. (laughs) What the fuck is up with that? I mean, seriously, why would you need a pin that you need? Just, no, no, no. Um, I'm going to set it so there's a biometric scan that allows Oberon to only be logged in by me, right? Because you can fucking do that. Mm -hmm. And then Oberon has system admin rights which allow him to open this door that you do not have why do you need a bloody pin that someone can watch or even just guess yeah it's just stupid it does seem odd and it breaks what it does is this is a good example of a kind of an actual plot hole of the of the story (laughs) breaking its own internal logic because the internal logic is this is a game it's vr but it's a game it's not a metaphor for something it's not like a higher reasoning space or any sort of fanciful thing or like um a metaphor no it's, it's a video game so there's no reason why certain things run on video game logic that makes sense and another one runs on just regular everyday logic that doesn't make sense in a video game not like all, the idea no. of having a pin like that doesn't happen in a video game you just go to where you are allowed to go 
Yeah. There's also n- makes no you, sense no, why... You don't even need a door. You just literally need, like, a thing where... No, you know, like, invisible walls in games, which stop players from going outside of bounds. Like Kirito has just run into yeah, as he's, he's tried to fly. he's literally run into an invisible wall when he tries to fly to the top of the tree, and it just goes, bonk! No, invisible wall, cannot pass this. You are absolutely trying to go out of bounds. Literally just designate everywhere in the whole world as out of bounds for Asuna's avatar mm. and then she literally can't leave yeah. like you don't even need the bloody cage at that point there's just a series of invisible walls around her and I'm... or even leave the cage for the metaphor you're trying to show but actually you don't need a bloody door on the cage you could have it as being like hell it'd be much better psychological torture to be able to see that the door is open but you cannot leave because there's an invisible bloody wall whereas he can just walk in and out and doesn't have to have a fucking pin you can observe yeah that's what's uh. always weird about it and in, in the novel, it goes into great deal to say how this is some sort of weird graphical error or something that she can see it. Uh, and it's just, well, no, like, that yeah. that's not, it's, it's, it's basically changing the rules of, of the, of the world in which we think the characters are inhabiting. And so, yeah, that's, that's irritating plot point one. So firstly, it's kind of boring to have Kirito and uh, Suzuha walking all the way. That's boring. So on the sa- on the surface, we've got boredom. And up top, we've got nonsense. Because, of course, she manages to watch his pin, at which point she goes out into the corridor by using the pin. Once again, if I was setting up this system where I wanted to keep someone in a fucking cage, do you know what I'd have? I'd have maybe a system alert when Avatar Asna is detected in area not cage. Mm. It's one line of code, people. It's mm. not difficult. What the f- Anyway, so we've got to believe that this guy is both a technical genius who's capable of doing all the programming of this VR and wonderful, but also has these huge gaps in his ability that he can't program a door to recognise admin rights or that he can't set up an alert about a system error. You say this, I do think there probably is a reason because it's like backpigging off Sword Art Online that he has Mm. to do it. But it it doesn't feel right when Kirito has to deal with these game problems, but Asuna... Has to deal with these being problems. locked up by a psycho problem. Yeah, basically. but basically, basically more everyday problems. But they're supposed to inhabit the same game world. That's the yeah. problem. It's that you know Asuna's problems don't make sense. No, and then Asuna gets out into the corridor and starts looking around, where she finds all of the other three hundred people as brains in jars. Again, I'm actually fine with this bit. You know what? It's fine. Do you know, if you did have this full access to someone's brain and you did want to try and utilize it, uh, the army, oh, we're going to make super soldiers. Frankly, I'd say a much better one would be the interrogation people. I mean, being able to check someone's memories or force them to tell the truth. That, to me, is probably the thing the army was going to be firstly interested in. But, you know, that's here, neither here nor there. But the brains and jars thing, they don't need avatars. They don't need to move around. The only reason asna has got an avatar is so that Oberon can molest it. Oh, God, seriously. But anyway, um, the thing that bothers me about the brains in jars is all of the scientists and technicians who are working on this. Now, point is, he wants to make her in love with him and change her brain chemistry and all that sort of nonsense. But at the same time, all the other scientists don't have that. Like, they're working on this. and But do you know what they've done? Is They've gone, all right, so Avatar's within the game. So everyone is in this game as either a humanoid fairy, a humanoid cat person, a humanoid... Um, general just person person but these people have gone no 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 do you know what would be really useful is if i was a slug (laughs) like i know that my brain isn't wired to have multiple appendages but what if i was a tentacle monster as long as he was a male tentacle monster apparently that's all right (laughs) exactly exactly it's just i'm sorry this system can't handle that i've got genitals not pertaining to my outside body. But do you know what it can handle? Is it can handle that I'm made of ooze and a tentacle monster. Yeah. That's fine. Again, another example of the thing that I hate about the logic of how you uh, have an avatar in Sword Art. But also, I think, one, I think it's kind of stupid that they're even in avatars in Sword Art, uh, in Alfheim anyway, doing this, because there doesn't. there's not a reason to. If you're going to be doing all the programming stuff, there's no... It doesn't really ever give an in-world reason why the scientists who are working on this have to be logged in to do it. But, you know, fine, all right, fine, they log in. But you know what? If I was asked to go and do my job in a VR system, 
I'd probably want some sort of interface that was very similar to the one I was using so far and not being a tentacle monster. Because I just think the sheer, you know, learning curve of having to learn how to be a tentacle monster would probably slow down your ability to work. That's true, because I can understand uh, working in a VR environment if you were a programmer. Uh, for this sort of thing, especially if you want to keep it kind of secret, there can be like a way of yeah. having conversation, like and other stuff about like how you know fiddly it could probably be to code on this thing, and you then don't have to worry about desk space and everything. But at the yeah, same I, time, I see that. oh, but I'm going to learn how to use a slug person body. <laughs> I know that the the slug person thing is again, it's just quick shorthand for these guys are horrible. Creepy, yeah, they must evil. be evil. Look, they want to be tentacle monsters. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's just and 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 it's the implied because she gets captured by tentacle monsters. It's just the oh, and then as for, I, I'm not remember right. So to recap this, I did read it again, but I didn't watch it again because I couldn't sit through another six hours of this crap. Mm-hmm. But um, as far as I remember, when they capture her, one of them's like, "Oh, we should put her back in the cage," and the other one's like, "Now nah, let's molest her first. Yeah, uh... don't you want to try out these tentacle monster bodies that we've got? I mean, hell, I've got tentacle monster body, and I'm just like, yeah, this is totally a thing. So yeah, again, it's the whole shorthand for evil is I'm going to molest this girl who can't move. Mm. Hooray! Does the moving writing. matter that much? <laughs> I don't know. It's weird that um, you think, I think it's it a takes thing away that all sense up. of agency. Well, yeah. Personally. No, I just think it's a bad thing, regardless. Like, but yeah, you are right. There is a frequency of people being <laughs> being restrained before they're being molested. Well, no, it's the thing of it's you can't move. I think it's partially because it always wants to have capable women and not particularly capable men. Like, if you look at it, it's always the people who are the molesters are always the people who aren't as good as the women they're actually assaulting. mm Hmm. Because Asna could kick the shit out of all of these people were she given a weapon and equal stats and rating and everything. And, and like, the guy had to paralyse her because both of them were better than um, he was in the first arc. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just... it's I think it's a way of disabling them and making them not unconscious. Like, they, they're aware of it, but it's a case oh, of... Dude, oh, dude, come on. Don't get into it. <laughs> no, all right, you said... You said no, I why. said... No, I, I was bringing you up on constantly making it sound like saying, oh, molest them while they're unable to move, as if that somehow makes regular molesting when they can move not as bad. That's what no, I was I'm bringing you up on. No, I'm not saying it's not as bad. I was I'm saying, not saying like, it's not as bad. I'm saying it's it's weirdly notable how they're always unable to move. Yeah, that's better. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. I've... Uh, God. It's hard to talk about this crap without actually... Well, that's why I said don't uh. go over it scene by scene. Pick All the right, theme fine. that I'm... you don't like, and let's discuss that. Well, I that. don't like the bloody slug people. All right, <laughs> but anyway, the thing is, right, so when she's managed to get out, we get to another kind of nonsense plot point, which is that there is a card, like a swipe card, that allows the admin rights. So rather than logging in and your avatar having admin rights, you've got a bloody swipe card which allows admin rights. This is the thing. Which Yeah, this is where it goes weird, because in... In a computer simulation where it's a metaphor for stuff that's happening, like in Tron, right? Yeah. Like, Tron is a security program, and his data disk that, like, hits people is, like, a representation of him, of in the computer, the security thing, quarantining or erasing bad programs, right? Yeah. That's what happens when they exist in the computer world. Like, and it doesn't look like that from the perspective of a human looking at it. The human just sees a computer running. But from the perspective of Tron, it's a person throwing the disc. Absolutely. Yeah. But from the perspective of a person looking at Alfheim, exactly what's happening that you see is happening. It's happening, because yeah. It's not that a... is the whole point. It's a yeah. one-to-one representation of what's actually being seen by everyone. Mm. So, so, yeah. Yeah, it makes no sense why in Alfheim, which is an actual computer simulation, you'd give people key cards. Yeah, you wouldn't. You just give them access rights. Like, I, when I'm on a computer at a workplace and I'm asked, oh yeah, could you look at these files? Do you know what? There's different folders and those folders have different access rights. And it isn't that I'm given the password to the folder because that's not how things work. I am given access. 
access rights to the folder so that I do not have to completely input a password every time. Because you know what passwords can be given to other people who are not allowed to actually look at these things. Mm. And the same way that key cards can be left out so that Asna can steal them and then no one thinks to actually check whether she's got a key card or not. And the key cards are bloody stupid regardless. But then... The fact that she can steal one and nobody notices as well. It can just go missing and no one goes, uh, yeah, system, could you please locate the file? No one can do a function search of find the key card or even just, we've lost the key card. System, please delete the key card because I don't know where it is and generate another one. Mm, exactly. You know, that basic like security system. Yeah. It's just, uh, so the fact that she gets a key card is bloody stupid. And then the fact that Yui, again, bloody Yui, and I hate the fact the whole plot hinges on her this time, manages to get to the cage, and then she goes, oh, uh, I can hear Yui shouting, and she's close enough. I should probably just, leap of faith, throw this keycard out the window, and it falls, and then Kirito manages to grab it. Yeah. Which, again, kind of complete bullshit, and it's just nonsense, and it really just... The, The problem with the second series is, even if it was if it was fun and interesting and actually had some decent i don't know combat or something like that you might forgive plot holes but plot holes in something that's also boring and also just constantly annoying you with its stupid nonsense such as slow people just you you get a lot less um forgiving of it i would say yeah but but i would say so yeah so that was alpha and high <laughs> No, that's from Asana's perspective, yeah. Yeah. But the other so the other major problem with this is that so it's not the story of of uh, Kirito and Suzuha going from A to B and then you have the finale where they get to the world tree. No. On the way, you have all the bloody world politics of oh yeah, secretly there's a guy in that organization who's a spy for that organization because that makes sense in a world where you can't defect because you're locked into factions. Yeah, it's just at character bit... creation. Yeah, you're locked into factions at character creation. And, you know, maybe in the... I think the ugh, there's something like in the future, they plan to introduce a patch where you can defect and change characters and transfer your levels but keep and keep your stuff. And that's why this guy does it, because he wants to get in with this other team early. But without official that's going to happen or that ability it's still stupid to have like this traitor but also there's this whole like Kirito goes and helps out at a summit between these other two factions and it's all big and political and and has absolutely no waiting because what we are aware of the threat and the the stakes that we are given is that Kirito's love interest, Asuna, is going to be married to this guy who is a horrific person who is definitely going to do horrible things to her, and that's bad. We want to stop that, and we want to stop that by finding her in this world and freeing her. And do you know what nobody cares about is who is currently head of the league tables in this game? (laughs) Because I don't care, you don't care, but yet we have this three or four episode arc nonsense story about how the salamanders are being betrayed by someone who's a spy and actually people are in, I mean, people being annoyed at Suzuha for leaving when she's got duties as part of her guild fine leave that in not a big deal but the fact that this whole thing of like oh no did you know the undines are having an alliance with the spriggans and then the cat people are also allying with the other people i can't remember the name of them but then we're going to go to this summit which is trying to be sabotaged and then of course someone's planning an ambush so that they can have these heads of the game killed which means they'd steal all their money which means they can't look no it's complete shit there's no reason that we care i mean they try and make us care by saying ah yes but these people are going to help launch an assault on the world tree and then that's going to be what saves asana but it's not it's that isn't what happens it's a case of kirito gets this key card and then manages to get round the guardians put the key card in the slot which again why does that exist yeah why why is that there like if you're the whole point of this is meant to be that the game is deliberately unwinnable that the game sets guardians at the world tree to stop you from going any higher but it always seems like they're defeatable except they're not because even if you manage to defeat them there's an invisible barrier at the exit 
right? Mm. Which means you can't go up higher, which means that the whole game is rigged against the players. Mm. Fine, that actually does make sense. What doesn't make sense is that you can take the key card, which apparently is used upstairs in the secret lab to go into mess around with brains, and for some <laughs> reason, this key card is exactly the same key card that you need to unlock the bit that is actually part of the game to get into the final world in the final dungeon. Which is where we hit the lab. It's complete nonsense. Hmm. Uh, so no, it's essentially three stories. You've got the Kirito walking there with Asuna. Sorry, with Suzar. That's a boring story. It's just dull. And it relies entirely on you being invested in Suzaha falling in love with both Kirito as a character and Kirito as a human who's her brother. And then you've got this thing of all the bullshit politics within the world, which relies on you either giving a crap about Alfheim or a crap about the stakes or what's going on. And we have no real time with these characters or these pol politics to really care. Or you can do the third arc, which is Asana and the slug people, which I'm not even going to go into why that's irritating. Even if it's at least vaguely interesting, it's so full of plot holes and horrific bullshit. It's just awful. Okay, well, that comes to the end. And yeah, <sighs> there's Hugh's screed on why Alfenheim, <laughs> uh, why Fairy Dance is so bad. My 10 minute one is, my like two minute one is just, it's bad because the theme is in conflict with itself. What's the problem? Oh, um, Oberon, oh bugger, I've forgotten his name. Uh, Sugo. 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 Nogiyuki. Yeah, Sugo Nogiyuki is treating Asuna as an object in several different ways. Uh, that's bad. Why? Because Kirito wants Asuna as an object. Even though Kirito treats her well, the way Asuna is framed and used in this story is as an object or a trophy for Kirito. Regardless of Kirito's like in-universe, you know, dialectic character desires, the the way that the the actual story sees Asuna is as also as an object, and it's a war between two dudes over a over a a, a lady that they see as an object. So. It's the Troy That's war, what, isn't it? Yeah. No, that had that had things about <laughs> what you'd willing to do and fate and mocking the gods. So no. <laughs> Troy. All right, fine. That is a better story. <laughs> yeah. The the Iliad is way more interesting than than this. That that's our ending sh uh, sound bite then. Don't watch the second sword arc. Read the Read the Iliad. Iliad. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs>